Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, traders. Steve here at Logic FX Trading, and welcome to our trading room recording on Thursday, the 8th of July 2021. Now, this is the first recording I've put out for a few weeks, guys. Had a bit of a break, so it, it may be a little bit rusty. What we do here is every single morning we go through all of the economic calendar, we go through all of the uh, currency pairs that we're interested in and get a general overview of what's going on in the markets. We look at the, um, uh, you know, the gold price, we look at Bitcoin, we look at silver, we look at the oil, and also we have a look at all of the stock markets just to get an overview of what's going on today, how that's related to what happened yesterday, and hopefully we'll look for some opportunities of what may happen tomorrow, and maybe we can trade them. Now, um, let's just start with uh, the next seven days, let's say. Hopefully that will include today, the 8th. No, it doesn't. Let's have a look at yesterday first. Inflation rate in Mexico, Euro uh, area, ECB monetary policy meeting accounts. Okay, nothing much to look at there, particularly not today since I don't really know what's going on in the market at the moment. What I do know is, is the headline news is that stocks are falling and bonds are rising. And the reason behind it is that there's worries about um, future growth, particularly in China at the moment, guys. And also there's a concern about this um, Delta variant, as they're calling it now, which uh, seems to be becoming the, the main uh, variant of uh, COVID-19, guys. Um, the UK's attitude toward it seems to be get yourself vaccinated and we're opening up. <laughs> that's it we're going for it uh, and at the minute I think we're running around 35,000 um, new cases a day but fortunately we're not seeing the same spike in deaths as we did the last time around so obviously the vaccination is helping um, apparently the vaccination doesn't stop you catching it but it does um, you know it's primed your body for dealing with it so um, hopefully any, anyone that catches it you end up with a you know, a mild flu symptom or something like that. Okay, so that seems to be the overview of what's going on at the minute, guys. Obviously, I put Bloomberg on the moment I get out of bed in the morning and just pick up on what they're saying, and then we go through this. Okay, so um, let's just do the next seven days then. So China inflation rate uh, tomorrow could be interesting. GDP in the UK, employment and unemployment in Canada, so right straight into it. Quite a lot of important information there, guys. New one loans on the 12th. Oh, that's in the next week, isn't it, guys? Yeah. Remember, we're Thursday today, so we really only should be looking up to there. So it's not really a big deal. With one day tomorrow. Um, so that, that today's really just a start. I'm, I'm doing this today to get myself up and running again, guys, to get an idea of what's going on, because at the moment I, I really don't. Um, I don't know, but that's the point of doing the exercise so you guys can see and hear what goes through my head as I get each new bit of information. Okay, so let's go over to the charts. Now, we're going to start with the NASDAQ here, guys. Um, you can see there, futures are included in these charts now in trading view. It used to be they'd be closed, and then as it opened, it would, it would come in, and you had a lot of gaps. But now they, they include the futures. Now, a few weeks ago, I put this in. Basically, it was a copy of what was going on over here. It got oaked what was going on back over here. And we'd come out of a correction here, and then we got that run up. And then we'd been in this correction. And, uh, you know, we, you don't know exactly that, these are, that this is what's going to happen. But I kind of said, you know, I get the feeling, listening to what's going on, um, we're going to get a run up, probably very similar to that. And that's exactly what's happened, guys. Obviously, it doesn't look exactly the same, but it's a, it's, it's a run up with little corrections, etc. Now, today we've had this correction. It's a little bit concerning because obviously you get the drawdown on your account on days like this. And it's always a bit of a worry. You know, and, and different people have different trading strategies. Some people just ride through it all, or if there's some cash on hand, they, um, they'll wait for, you know, the, the drawdown to hopefully get to the bottom. And, and somewhere down there, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll buy in again and, um, you know, try and, try and, 
time the market as it were. It's not always easy. Um, so we'll have to say, if you look at everyone's account um, over in eToro for this month, July, I think nearly everybody's in the red at the moment, guys, because even the cryptos, currencies aren't uh, rescuing anybody this this uh, last week or so. So we'll have to see how far this drops. I've taken a lot of money off the table and I'm sitting over 50% cash at the moment. That's because that's the trading strategy I have adopted for this year because I do believe at some point we're going to get a major correction. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. I should have put it all in 100% back in January, guys, and just traded it as you know, as you hit your targets. And um, I would have had a better return. We're just over 11% for the year so far, but I've only been trading 50% of the money on the table. So we could easily have hit our target. Target for the year's um, 20%, guys. That doesn't mean that we can't make more than 20%. It just means that the strategy I'm using this year is um, cautious in order to try and get 20% for the year, guys. Uh, and obviously, we don't know. There could be a – we're not expecting a crash, guys, but there certainly could be a, a major correction at some time between now and the end of the year. Um, so that could really put paid to everything, but it, it won't just be my, my account that gets hit by that. It'll be everybody's. But if we some cash in the hand, if that happens, then we can buy in. Of course, the downside of that is that if we don't get the correction, you're still sitting waiting for those cheaper prices. So it's it's always, um, you know, it's, it, there's no one way of trading, guys. Um, but the most important thing you need to be is, is uh, cautious with your money so you don't blow your account, you know. And it's particularly if you're learning, don't blow your account and then, you know, that's you done. Enjoy it. Be in it. Be cautious. Keep a hold of your money. And then when the opportunities come and your experience builds, then you be in the position to uh, to make good money with it, guys. So I don't know that we're going to get that sort of drawdown, but I would not be surprised, guys. This is a moving candle at the minute. I wouldn't be surprised if we got something like that um, over the next few days. Um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Okay, so let's move on. Dow Jones still up there. I think this is also... Um, also uh, running on futures. Yeah, that's that. Oh, no, not. That's the seventh. We're on the eighth. There's no information in there at the moment. Let me just check if that NASDAQ is actually live. I think it is. I think that's moved since we started talking. Yeah, that's the eighth, guys. That's live. Uh, live on futures, of course. S&P. Yeah, that's still uh, still yesterday, guys. So um, we had a bit of a push up yesterday in the S and P, and as you see, uh, also um, the uh, the Dow Jones, and and that's a little bit of maybe movement out of uh, out of techs and into uh, value stocks or you, you know the likes of um, you know, mining companies, etc. Now I have quite a bit on gold at the minute, which has been which held me back last month, guys. We'll look at the account when we finished doing the um, the charts here. But it held me back. We did about 2.5% last month, if I remember rightly. There's it there, actually. Let's have a little quick look. Yeah, 2.59%. But gold really held me back last month. But I'm hoping that if we do start to get this drawdown, we might get a bit of movement into safety, and gold might get a bit of a boost off that, guys. It doesn't always, because if there's a bit of a panic, then people sell everything they've got to cover their margins. So we'll have to see how that goes. But... I, I think gold should um, gold should be a good uh, insurance policy, but as I say, sometimes insurance it um, it doesn't pay off in the short term, but in the long term, it's nice to have it, guys. Uh, S and P, as I say, is looking up there. I think it needs to correct, guys. Uh, the knee case still within this correction. All of these lines from a while ago, I've moved them over, guys. You can see there they've all had heads on them. I'm looking for this to break out long, but obviously not today, folks. Um, UK, you can see it's dropping. We're on a four-hour time scale here, guys. So since they opened this morning, it's uh, it's been dropping. Uh, French, even more um, pronounced there. German, 
not so uh, pronounced as the UK. Remember, these different markets are made up of um, very different companies to maybe what the NASDAQ would be, guys. If you take the, the UK market, for example, um, it's it's insurance companies, it's big mining companies, it's, um, you know, massive multinationals, not so many tech companies, guys, which, you know, so you get a different feel for it. Um, to what you would get in the NASDAQ. Um, so there's the China down um, and the Aussies down. Everything's down today, guys. The, the Russell down, uh, but it's still within this um, fat correction that it's been in for a while. I'm a little bit concerned about these. Let's go back and look at this Aussie. Um, well, we were looking for the Aussie to drop to the bottom of this uh, channel, guys, for uh, an opportunity to, tr to trade it long. Uh, so there's nothing happening there that we weren't looking for a while back. DXY. Now, I haven't been trading currencies very much recently because I don't like trading currencies until I have a handle on the dollar. And when we were getting into this, guys, you can see there's an ending diagonal. We had divergence over here. And I was looking for a 50% retracement back up on this. So I got long on this a couple of times. I still think the overall trend is flat to short. But it's the timing off. It's difficult, guys. If it's going to run flat, then we're going to get this type of thing. But I do think if, if you consider how much uh, how, how many dollars have been printed over this last uh, year and a half? The dollar really is, uh, in my view, overvalued, guys. So I prefer to try and short it um, at the moment. But when, when, it, when, it's, when it was so blatantly obvious there that that had to react to this. I did try and trade it long. Um, I got it long there, but it dropped on me again. I got out of it, and then I got long again, and it stopped in here, and I got out of it again because I just wasn't sure. And I didn't want to be caught long if it ended up continuing that whole trend down. You can see that channel there, guys. Um, so I was a little bit concerned about it. So if you're not sure, I just get out of things, guys. Um, and if and if, if you have a high degree of probability in your head that something's going to go in a certain direction, then trade it, you know. And as it turned out, it was wrong. It would have made a ni really nice move there. But this was this was the change in attitude of the Fed that, that made that uh, move up happen. They'd been saying that, um, you know, that all the inflation in, in the uh, U.S. economy was transitory. And then they thought, oh, well, maybe it isn't. <laughs> but they didn't even say that, but the market interpreted that that's what it said. And and we got this reaction. But as it is, the Fed hasn't said anything different to what they've said in a long time. Um, that the inflation that we're seeing at the moment is transitory. They're looking to get full employment, well, as, as near as possible, full employment. So it's the employment figures that I'd be keeping an eye on more than anything else in the U.S., but um, so there we are. I've shorted the dollar this morning, guys. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but what I've basically said, well, is if it's going to run flat, yeah, certainly there could be a bit more upside to this. But just looking at that, it looks like an ending diagonal to me. Look at that, guys. So purely on technicals, um, I've shorted that. Maybe we'll get a nice little trade like that. Remember, yet again, we're on four hours. So w when you get an ending diagonal, I generally look for a, um, a 50% uh, retracement. And and they usually happen quite quickly, guys, which is the reason why I chickened out of this because I was looking for a 50% retracement on there. Now, we can we can actually do this two ways. Um, let's see if we can get this right. Yeah, so on the upside, I was looking for a move up into there. And, and as you can see, it, it overshot. So I, I got it right technically. But remember, there's a big difference between getting something right technically and actually getting it right as in you traded it. And there's a lot of people out there will bum and blow about getting their charts right. But trading, it's another thing, guys. It's one, <laughs> it's one thing calling it. It's another thing to have the courage of your convictions and, um, and get into it. But nonetheless, 
the, you know, it, it's a good starting place is to get your technical analysis correct, and then at least you have the option to trade. Okay, and with and without any analysis, then you're just you're just gambling, folks. So yet again, on this side we have what looks like an ending diagonal. Doesn't mean it's going to go today, guys. As you saw over there, it took it a week before it went. Um, but I'm I've I've decided just to take the X Y short in there, guys. Um, so we'll see how it goes. And um, what am I after? Well, I'll, as I said, um, I'll be looking for a fifty percent retracement of that up, which would yeah bring us into there. It was pretty pretty close. And of course, if it if it decides to go further, that's fantastic because remember. The trend could still be down. Let's go and look at the trend. That's the trend we've been trading all year, folks. Um, in fact, since March last year, that's been the trend. Um, so is the trend over? I don't know. But the one thing I would say is I'm more inclined at this time for more downside to it. And if we don't get the downside as in, you know, so that's probably 127 extension. I can't remember exactly, guys. Um, we'll we'll look at all of these things individually as we go along each day, guys. Can't cover everything today, but I think that's probably 127 extension of that fifth wave, guys. Um, so even if it just runs flat in here, I think we should be okay. As I said, could push up, and I think it'll come back down again. Uh, you never know 100% with trading, guys, but what you're looking for is the high probability situation. Um, so let's move on from DXY and see how that's going to affect all the major pairs. Uh, let's get out of the daily, get into the one hour time scale. Okay, so if I'm correct on the direction of the dollar there, we could well see a move up here in the euro. Uh, whether it will get up back up to there or not, or not I, I, I'm not sure. But certainly over the next few days, we could see a move like that. And then two or three days time, guys, maybe mid next week, we'll see if that's happened. And then we'll decide, you know, are we now looking for a setup to continue up? Or are we going to take profit in there? Or has it not happened at all and it's continued to drop? You know, that can happen. But then obviously we, we have stop losses to uh, cover ourselves for that. You know, always put a stop loss in, guys, in case you, you get your analysis wrong. Um, and then pound, same thing, guys, a possible move up through there. It's not actually happening yet, guys, so I'm not entirely sure that that I'd trade that. There is something that I'm a little bit more excited about today than the dollar, but let's just get the dollar done with first. Um, well, from here... We we did talk about this coming back up. That must have been the last time we. When would that have been? July, June the twenty first. Uh, no, we've had, we've had, um, we've had other calls since then. So this is the Aussie dollar against the US. Um, I'm still looking for it to go in that direction, guys. Remember, look for a breakout. Look for a, a reason to get involved in it. That we're, this is just a first view. We're just looking at this and saying that this is what I'm going to be looking for over the next few days. It doesn't mean we jump in today and start trading it. I know I've taken the uh, the Dow Jones, or <laughs> I know I've taken uh, DXY short, guys. There's a little bit of a reason for that is that I know that the stock markets are dropping today, and it's it's kind of a, yet again kind of an insurance policy. Um. That's that's the the main reason for taking for me taking that today because I think I need that insurance policy. In New Zealand, same thing, guys. I'd be looking for this to um to come along. When we're way back here, we said this would run flat, guys. And when we say that, we mean within a range. So it's come up, it's come down. I think it'll come back up again. US CAD. Well, that's quite a move there against the CAD. So that tells me that oil is probably not doing so well or maybe some other commodities. Would that be it? Let's go over and look at our economic calendar. Is there anything in here that would have... Um, let's go down in importance. I haven't heard anything about Canada today, folks. 
So I'm not entirely sure why that's going off in the wrong direction. Well, what for me seems like the wrong direction. But that's something that I'll look into over the next 24 hours. Why is that moving in the opposite direction to the direction that I'm expecting the dollar to move in? Um, that's a bit of a concern for me. Um, yeah, there's possibly a little double top in there. Now, one thing I will say about this, the Swedish krona often, the sorry, the dollar Swedish krona pair, this, this chart, often points the way for um, the other major um, currency pairs, guys. For some reason, it seems to, it seems to lead. So if you see a breakout on this, for example, here, often you can then go over and look at the rest of them and, and they'll, they'll be moving in that direction as well, guys. Uh, but this tends to be a little bit more volatile, tends to move a little bit more sharply. So um, I find that it's um, not, listen, it's not all of the time that it leads, but um, often if you get a breakout on this, it'll indicate a break on a breakout that will come later on one of the other major pairs. Now, here's the one I'm really interested in today, guys, the yen. Now, this is because um, safe haven move, guys. People are moving into the yen because stocks are dropping. Now, you could say, well, then the dollar should also get a, a bit of a boost from that. And you're right, it should. But for some reason, I think the concern about the dollar is uh, the amount that have been been printed and the uh, maybe it's the whole transitory thing but uh, my main reason for taking this and uh, you know guys the whole point about going through all of the charts before making a decision and I haven't done that this morning by the way so it could turn out that that's the wrong decision I don't know yet guys um, I, I took that trade on a technical remember but the whole reason for going through all of the charts is that you can pick up information about something that maybe either backs up a, a, an initial thought process that you had or it can put a doubt on it and when something puts a doubt on a decision it's often a good idea not to take that decision because it's always better to to not be in a trade if you don't have a a high degree of probability or belief that it's going to to come off guys so you know so we're going through this as i said this is my first time through this in a few weeks um we've had that move down in the yen now if we go back to two or three weeks ago that hasn't shown up here yet guys not entirely sure whether this runs live or what i would have expected us to start to get that move that move that I was looking for a few weeks ago. If we go out into the four hour, we can see it better. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to go that far, guys, but certainly I was looking for that move out of there. Um, and given what we just witnessed there, I would have expected to see some movement there on that. So potentially there's going to be a bit of a, a move up on the yen, guys. So that's something I'm looking at today. And I've actually taken, also jumped the gun, which isn't the best thing to do. I've jumped the gun and taken a couple of yen trades as well today, guys. Uh, US China. Now, this one's a little bit more tricky. The reason I say that is, is that the, the, with the Chinese economy not growing as much as expected, you could well see the Chinese uh, government stepping in and providing a bit more liquidity, guys, um, which would see the one dropping. And and the only one I look at is the uh, against the dollar. But I, I suppose if we went and looked at it against other currencies, we might see a bit more um, upside uh, to it today. In fact, let's just do that. Let's go. What could we look at? Say the, the Aussie. No, let's look at the yen. Uh, 
see it jam, isn't it, guys? Nope. Jappy coin. What? What's that? And APY. CNH, that's what I'm doing wrong, guys. CNH. Offshore Chinese Wan Mo. Must have currency uh, regulations, same as South Africa, folks. Uh, there you go. There you go. Thought that might happen. So I've never traded that before. I've never even looked at this chart before, but just give me, I just thought to myself, if we're seeing a bit of weakness in the one, a bit of strength in the yen, potentially that could be something to, to look at. Guys, I don't even think I could trade that. Certainly not on, uh, on eToro, which is where our um, training account is. Fuck, folks. Um, anyway, interesting. Let's move on. It's not a chart I usually look at, but... It just shows you how ideas can come about in your, your head. Um, look at that, USD, Swiss. So the Swiss, safety, Swiss and the yen, guys. Uh, we were looking for a break there. Look at the divergence. Ending diagonal. It's not, not perfect. It's not beautiful, but ending diagonal, guys, and then it goes. We could have picked up on that one yesterday. If I'd have been doing this yesterday, we could well have done okay here today folks uh remember we're on a four hour chart so that's that's a nice move gold my old pal oh, come on let's see some movement the gold little bit of a movement this morning it's pulled back let's go down to the one hour there's a lot of um mixed thoughts about gold at the moment i still think long term gold will go long guys but whether this is the time that it, it moves back to the top of the channel or not is another thing i'm not entirely convinced by the way it's moving here i got caught out on it over here folks uh, i traded it for a couple of months up through here and when i say i traded gold i didn't trade gold guys i traded gold mining companies and etfs um and and took profits up through here and then when we got this dip i, th I saw this as a i was looking for that you know for it to continue on up in other words a correction and uh, I got involved here again and then got caught out in that, guys. And that's quite a move, actually. So that's what held me back last month, guys. Um, we probably would have, could certainly have been up at 4% for last month if it hadn't have been for that. And I'm still obviously caught up in that. Uh, had a little bit of a recovery off it, um, but I would need to sort of get up into this area, which is quite a move, actually before we'd be in profit with that. But we could certainly claw back some of the drawdown, which would be nice. Um, so if, well, the, the difficulty we have with this is that that will probably not happen unless the markets go short. Um, I don't mean crash, because when they crash, everything crashes. But I mean, if, if they start to, money starts getting taken out of the stock market. Um, we're seeing a, a lot going into bonds, guys. Bond yields are dropping, and when the bond yields are dropping, that means people are buying, uh, and it works the other way. When when people buy bonds, and the yield goes up. Um. So let's see. We'll see. Uh, overall, I'm pretty confident in gold, um, because there w I think the markets are overheated. Assets uh, are expensive. If you look at the, the price to earnings ratios, guys, they're high and they need to come off. So that's why I'm sitting with a lot of cash at the minute, guys. Okay. Uh, silver. Running flat. Um, I've, I've a couple of little um, trades on SLV. Yet again, because I do think that silver is cheap, doesn't mean it can't come down here. But if you take a longer view on silver, you know, it's $26, guys. I can remember telling you guys way back when it was $15 to buy it, way back through here. I kept saying it was cheap. Now, obviously, we had the anomaly of the, um, the market crash last year where it dropped like a stone, guys. But look where it went after that. Um, and that was a 
a very unpredictable thing. So don't beat yourself up <laughs> when your technical analysis doesn't doesn't include something like a world pandemic that we haven't had in 100 years, guys. Those things happen. Uh, but look at the recovery and look at the arrow. I, I've left that arrow in, guys. I put that arrow in way back down here. And since then, we've ran flat on a daily time scale. So good to be more downside, certainly. But if it dropped any further, I would certainly be buying up. Now, when we were over here a few weeks ago, a few months ago, should I say, let's go into the four hour. When we were here, we got to there. I was basically saying, listen, if this drops down into here, I'll definitely buy. Um. So I missed the initial move here, but then I, I took little bits of profit going up through here. And then yet again, I saw this as a, you know, a base for the next leg up. So I got caught out in that little bit and then added again. So we're, we're, we're not too bad in silver, but it's a longer uh, term uh, view. So if it drops, I'll just add to it. Maybe up to five percent or something. That'll see how much gold they've got. On. And, uh, you know, we're not talking about putting, you know, twenty or thirty percent of the account in it, guys. We're just talking about maybe building it up three, four, maybe even five percent if it were to drop further. Bitcoin, which I no longer trade in this account because it's too volatile, and you work really hard to get some good uh, figures in there, and the next thing you know, it's. Um, you know, it's been dragged down by Bitcoin. So I have a Coinbase account, guys, but I'm really only playing with it at the minute. Um, I think Bitcoin's got a while to go before it's going to take off. As you saw there, back here, I said, well, if, if it gave us another leg down, and the reason for looking for another leg down was just basically one, two, three, potentially, uh, potential four and five. Hasn't come down that far, but it doesn't mean that it couldn't, guys. If it were to come down into that area, I'd certainly be interested in it. You know, listen, it could even go further. It can come maybe down to fifteen thousand. That doesn't mean that I don't believe that it will um, that it will go long. I do. It's just about the timing of it. Okay, so that's just a, an overview of Bitcoin, guys. If it comes down into that area, I'd certainly be interested, and in I do think it will come back up. And I do think that it'll uh, possibly even break that top. But let's not get carried away with ourselves. Um, if you're a, a Bitcoin believer <clears throat> and it's down at this level, guys, uh, just add to your position. Uh, but do understand that it could drop further. So you're going to have to have a long-term view on it if that's what you want to trade. I'm certainly not that type of trader with Bitcoin. There's oil, guys. We're on the four hours with a good little pullback in oil. I don't think it's too much to uh, get concerned about. Um, I think oil's going to stay up here. You can see the range that, that I was talking about. I assume that was the range that I was talking about a while back. Uh, I don't entirely know why I've drawn both of those in there, guys. But nonetheless, <clears throat> I'm not looking for oil to go down there, guys. Um but it may be dropping. There's a couple of things with oil. Now, as I say, today's me getting up to speed. Uh, I have been listening to Bloomberg and what have you, you know, over the last few weeks, but, but not with the intensity I, I would normally do. There has been a bit of a spat between the UAE, I think, and Saudi Arabia about uh, oil production. I'll look into that so we have a better idea tomorrow. We'll build, obviously we build on the information that we have. That could be part of it. But more likely this drawdown is because of growth fears in China. Because obviously if there are fears of growth means production isn't going to be as high. When your production isn't going to be as high, you're, um, you're not going to drop, uh, use as much energy, guys. So your energy prices drop. Remember, it's all about supply and demand. Now, whether it's going to turn into something deeper or whether it's just going to be a little pullback and then we continue on up, I don't know. But listen, oil price up around there, just like the gold price. When the gold price gets high, guys, it, the, the fluctuations in it aren't that important because gold mines are making money when they get over their costs. Once they cover their costs, for each $10 or whatever it might you want to talk about that gold goes up, they're doubling and trebling their, 
their profit, guys. In other words, if, if they're making ten dollars an ounce, after let's say the gold price is um, and I know we're talking about gold, but it's similar with oil, guys. Let's say the gold price is um, uh, what is it? It's eighteen hundred. Let's say it costs a thousand dollars to produce an ounce of gold. And the gold price is eleven $1 hundred dollars. So for every ounce that the gold mine produces, it's making a hundred dollars. But if the price goes to twelve hundred dollars, the costs are still the same, guys. But the gold mine just doubled its profit with a one hundred, you know, what, all let's say ten less than ten percent increase in the value of gold or the price of gold. The gold mine has doubled its profit, guys. Now. Obviously, it's not as simple as that, but it's along those lines. And it's similar with, um, you know, with, with with oil, guys, that you're looking at a range. Now, what I'm talking about here is if you're trading the, the, the companies that make money from it, if you're trading an oil company, if you're trading a gold mining company, guys, um, I don't see any big downside to um, to the oil business at the moment, guys. Energy's going to stay high. Uh, you know, maybe it runs flat. Maybe there's a range there it comes into. Maybe this is just a blip. We'll have to see. Maybe it drops a bit, but it's certainly not going to weigh down there. That's the point I'm making. And, you know, if we look at the bigger picture, maybe you get a bit of running flat here. But the gold price is for, or sorry, the oil price for me is going to stay up in that range. I don't trade oil because it's expensive to trade it, guys. Okay, Eurocad. Now, when when we said earlier about, um, I wasn't entirely sure why. If we go back to uh, US CAD, I wasn't entirely sure why that had happened. Well, that's happened because of that oil price dropping, guys. And then if we come over here, Eurocad, same story. That move there has happened because of the dropping oil price. Does that mean that this potentially is a, a half decent trade up? Well, that will only that will only be true if the dollar continues to drop. You can see there I was looking for the euro to drop some more, guys. Um, I'm going to sit on the fence for this one uh, for the next few days, maybe into Monday, Tuesday. Next week, we'll get a better idea. If we start to see that move down in the dollar, and it happens, you know, between now and then, obviously, you know what I'm looking at, guys. Um, if we start to see that move down in the dollar, then you will get more upside on the euro, folks. Um, and there's there's also a nice move up in the euro against the Oz, so maybe this moves on the euro, guys, and not the not the um, not the CAD. Be interested to see what. Let's have a look at. You know, there's the same move there. I was looking for this to drop just within this channel here, guys. Now that move up doesn't mean we're suddenly changing direction. We need to find out why that's happening. And that's part of the reason for going through this, because then I end up with a, a a list of questions I need to find the answer to, guys. Um, sometimes we know why it's happening. Sometimes we can find out why we're talking, and sometimes we've got to say, "Hang on a minute, why is that happening?" And hopefully by tomorrow we'll know, and then when we do tomorrow's um, recording, we'll be able to let you know why that's happening. Euro yen. Now that's interesting, isn't it? So despite the fact that the euro has gone long, I'm not entirely sure why I've just pull that out of the way. Despite the fact that the, the euro's gone long against um, everything else, look at it against the yen. So if these fears about world growth continue, the yen should continue to get stronger, guys. That's why I've taken two yen trades today. Yet again, like the dollar one, it's a little bit. It was a little bit late for it, but I'm thinking it could be the start of a trend. In other words, this, this could turn out to be something bigger. Uh, and I don't know that it's going to move like that, guys. But if it were to come up, maybe that'd be a better time to trade it. Euro Swiss, look at that one. It's still. I would say it's still within this. 
So do you then look to treat it up? I wouldn't jump into it today, guys. Let's see what what happens. ECB sets 2% inflation go allows overshoot. So there, that's um, the European Central Bank basically doing the same as, as the Fed, guys. 2% uh, target for inflation and they'll allow it to overshoot. Um, what the Fed have said is that they'll average it at two. So if it goes up to three, maybe three and a half, they'll not be concerned, although it's been higher than that recently. But they're saying it's transitory and there was the base effects from last year. So we're still waiting to see what the Fed thinks or what, what the real inflation rate is, guys. Pound CAD, there again, dropping the CAD, folks. I don't think we'll see that big move in the rest of the pound. It pairs, but we'll have to see. What am I looking for next? Well, at the moment, I don't know, guys, because this is the first day back. So maybe we look for a setup to trade it on up. Not convinced of that. Another nice move up in the pound. So we're having a move today on the pound. Don't know the reason for that yet. Should know by tomorrow, hopefully. Pound New Zealand. Nice move up there. We were looking for this to break out and go long, guys. So, unfortunately, because I haven't been, I, I will never trade if I haven't got myself up to speed on, on what's happening, guys. So, even though a few weeks ago I put that line in to say we're looking for a breakout, and there's the arrow. That's an arrow, by the way. <laughs> That's an arrow. I was looking for that trade, but I'm not in it, guys, because um, I haven't been keeping an eye on things the last few weeks. Uh, pound Swiss taken off in the opposite direction. So the Swiss and the yen are, are definitely the, the things to be in today. If you're already in them, fantastic. I don't know if this is the start of a bigger move or whether that's the move. We're going to need a little bit more information, guys. And there you have it again. Uh, pound euro, that's the, that's the push. Oh, that's gone the opposite direction. Remember, these all are in four hours, guys. So these are reasonably big moves. I don't talk about pips at all. When I'm trading, I talk about percentage. And um, I look at structure. We're, we're not concerned about pips. But if you're a pip person, uh, you know, what sort of movement we had there. What's that? It's at 68 pips. I don't know, guys. I never deal with pips. They don't make any sense to me. Um. Okay, uh, pound yen. So there's the yen pushing the pound down. We were looking for that, and what we said was if we got it down into there, we would look to trade it up. Now, I'm not going to jump into that, guys, until we find out what's going on with the world economy and whether the, the markets are going to continue to move to safety, because if they do, then this would continue down. But if it's just a, you know one of those days where everybody panics, then and, and the yen starts to uh, to drop again, then maybe we could uh, look for that trade there, folks. Um, <laughs> although, having said that, this is this is one of the trades I took this morning short, and this shows you the reason why you should always do your analysis of the whole market before you make any decisions, which is the reason why we do these every day, guys. Because with hindsight, looking at that, I'm not sure that I would have taken um, the pound yen short. And I might just go over and close it, guys, because I've got a doubt in my mind about it now. And if I close it at this stage, I haven't moved much. I'll maybe lose a couple of dollars or something or a very, very small... You know, your um now look at that one. Yet again we were looking for that to go long. Um but that was before we we had the change and from there we were looking for, for it to go up. So anyone that traded that would have a nice little uh, a nice little um trade guys and remember depending on what your strategy is say you got into that and then you went long on it and to be honest generally speaking i don't try 
and trade situations like that. And we'll talk about that as we go on. Um, I'm more more likely to, if you get a spike like that, if it comes up and then gives you a setup, I would trade it from there, guys, which is the reason that we had that over there. We were looking to see, was that going to just be a little push out? And then as it breaks out there, we would start to trade it up. So I wouldn't have been in that at all. But And, and that's the reason for doing that, guys, because it hasn't broken out there, so we shouldn't be in it. Although if we were watching it carefully, we could well have got in there and then had that reverse, which would be unfortunate. But then that's the reason why you keep nice tight stop losses. Or if you're trading a, you know, very small position sizes, which to be honest, you should be, then you can leave it open um, and then decide, OK, well, it's dropped, but I haven't lost that much. Let me get out of it. Uh, that's all speculation because we're I'm not in it and you guys shouldn't be in it in the wrong direction. But uh, that's more or less me saying, well, what would happen if we had have got into that? Um, is it going to continue down? Quite possibly. Quite possibly, but that will entirely depend on what the market, how the remark. <laughs> right, let me try and say that again. That will entirely depend on how the market reacts to this fear of um, the growth of Delta. And you see, UK isolation uh, changes for vaccinated to come in from the 19th of July. If you're doubly vaccinated, they're saying you don't have to isolate. Now, this is just the UK. This isn't everywhere else, guys. But it's an experiment. It's just an experiment. And they're going to run with high numbers. So they're going to open up in the 19th. Well, it's England, but England's the vast majority of the UK. England's going to open up in the 19th of July. And they're saying that you don't have to isolate if you're doubly vaccinated you know if you're if, if you're exposed to someone but you're doubly vaccinated you can still go to work um but obviously if you're not vaccinated you're exposed to someone then you need you have to stay at home but uh, whether people are going to do that or not is another thing you know do you trust individuals no you don't that's why you have a government, because individuals always look after themselves, not society in general. Okay, uh, over the end, um, it's on the way down. Obviously, it's not a, a an entry point, guys. Um, <clears throat> so we'll give it a few days. We'll see what happens. If it comes back up and we we'll see, you know, and, and the news continues that... Um, the, there's problems where fears about growth, then maybe we see a setup to get involved in that. Um, I don't know whether we would have done any better had I have spoken yesterday, guys. Um, but we are where we are. Okay. Uh, Aussie, New Zealand, it's running flat, guys. It has been for quite a while. I don't necessarily have a direction on it at the moment, which is the reason why I'm not trading it. I love trading this pair, but um, recently it's, it's look, from a way back here, it's just been running flat, guys. Aussie Swiss, there you go, there's a Swiss again, guys. Now, I, I was looking for the opposite, looking for a breakout in that. <clears throat> so it was a wee bit sneaky there, guys. I mean, remember, we're on four hours here. Let's go down to the one hour. You could well have got yourself caught out in this yesterday or you know during the week but to be honest with the distance that's moved if you got into that move up you should have had your stop loss to zero so you would have got you know you wouldn't have got caught up in this um so there you have it it is what it is we're gonna to have to wait and see what it does next if you're in it fantastic get your stop to zero or take your profit if you're not in it you're going to have to wait and see what it does next, folks. You can't just jump into it. Aussie CAD. Now, this is interesting because we were looking for a breakout. We've had a breakout. Now we're getting a little setup. Is that going to break long from there? 
it's entirely possible that it does. I'll have to have a think about it. Um, as I say, I'm not going to make be making any more big decisions on currencies today, folks. Until I get a better feel for what's going on. Swiss yen. Well, they're both going long today, so they're balancing each other out. If you look at it overall, it looks like it wants to break long. Way back over here, um, I was trying to short it, and I really didn't get anywhere right through here. Really didn't get anywhere, guys, because every time I shorted it, came back up and stopped me out. And then the one thing I didn't do was I didn't short. Once it broke out of there, I didn't short it. There was a, it was a very high percentage of people on eToro were shorting it from there. And I just said to myself, that's a breakout. Why are they shorting it? And up it went for months. Don't know what it's going to do next. We'll build our picture up in that, guys, as we go along. Look at this one, CAD Swiss. Now, this is interesting. This is the uh, pair that I've traded the most over the last few years. Right up through here. From that drop, we traded it right up through here, guys. Really did a great prediction on this from, I think it's from around here. Put a chart out on it. Um. Gonna have to start putting more charts out, guys. Anyway, we predicted this lovely. It's now running flat. It's also what we predicted that it would run flat. It's come to the bottom. The big thing is now, when we were here, I said if it gets to the bottom of this, I'll trade it up. <sighs> but I'm not gonna do that today, folks. You see there when this was coming off, I said if it gets to the bottom. Remember, we're always dealing with if then. If it gets to the bottom, we'll trade it up. Okay. And if, if it doesn't get to the bottom, we're not trading it. So from there, I was waiting for this. Now we have that. Am I going to be brave enough to trade it back up? Well, that will depend entirely how the rest of the day goes. So I'm not going to call that now. Um, but if the news changes through the day, if when the market's open in the US, the uh, futures at the moment are telling us, if we go back to the NASDAQ, guys, futures are telling us that the NASDAQ's going to open down. It's down 203 points at the moment, guys. I'm just looking here in Bloomberg. Um, crude's down. 10-year is the yields down. Euro dollars up. S&P futures are down 1.4%, guys. <gasps> Which means we could get battered today uh, on the NASDAQ. Luckily, my portfolio is a little bit more diversified than just the NASDAQ. But I certainly was looking to get into it yesterday, guys. 10-year yield falls to its lowest. Oh. Just trying to hit, read the rolling headlines here on uh, Bloomberg, folks. But the 10-year yield, bond yield in the United States has dropped like a stone, folks. And that's money getting into American bonds, which is money coming out of the stock market. So let's keep an eye on that one. Cad yen. There you go again, guys. Now, yet again from here, I said if we got down to here, we would trade it up. Another nice drop. So what we've got to do now is determine whether that move on this yen and the Swiss is going to continue or whether it's just a little panic for the day and then off we go again. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to put a big question mark in it. And if it turns out that it's just a bit of a panic, um, we could get some nice trades on the CAD that later this week, maybe in the next week, folks. New Zealand yen, same thing. We were looking for that to break out long. Hasn't done it, but we'll put that like that as a precaution. And we'll move that over to there. And we'll see what information it gives us next, guys. New Zealand CAD, nice breakout. We were looking for a breakout on the New Zealand CAD. Do you trade that up? Mm. Potentially, not going to make a decision today, folks. 
and New Zealand Swiss. There's a Swiss. Now, yet again, we were looking to, to trade this up. We were looking for it to break out of that uh, correction, guys. Thought that was the bottom. Um, obviously, I haven't been trading because I haven't been uh, trading recently. I trade currencies more, you know, pretty quickly, guys. If I get a move, I get my money out of it. So I'm not the sort of guy that sits in a currency for weeks unless I'm stuck in it. So, um, so I wouldn't have been, you know, holding on to something from two or three weeks ago. <laughs> Let's see where this gets to, folks, and then we'll make a decision. You don't need to jump into things, guys. The, the market always gives you plenty of time. Look at that move, and then look what happened. Look at that move, and then look what happened. Look at that move, and then look what happened. Remember that move saying it would go short. Just depends whether today is you know, one of those days where you look back and you go, that was the day that the market had its peak. I don't know if it is, guys, but let's not be doing anything rash in case it turns out to be the day that the market decides everything's overvalued. And then GDX, we had the big move down on gold uh, two weeks ago when the Fed started to be less dovish. So that's the day that, that the dollar went long. Now, if, if the dollar drops, as I'm hoping, then you should see gold coming up and therefore you'll see GDX coming up. GDX being an e uh, EFT of major gold mining companies, guys. Okay, uh, just before we finish up here, just a quick look at the account. Oops, what's going on now? Quick look at the account. This is all public view anyway, guys, so I'm not giving you anything away here. Um, the target for the year is 20%. If we do better, fantastic. If we do less, then I'm not going to be so happy. Uh, up to this point, we were doing okay. We're on 11.5%. We've had a bit of a drawdown since there in the first few days here in July. We're going to be drawn down further today, probably. Hopefully, this doesn't turn out to be a crash. Um, but at the end of the day, it swings and roundabouts, guys. Things get drawn down. you got to live with it, and then you've got to um, trade your way out of the situation. So we're doing okay so far, it's 10%. Uh, I was looking at the bank the other day, um, they sent me something out, uh, two-year two year savings account, you know, lock your money up for two years. Guess how much they were offering me? 0.02%. 0.02% is what the bank was offering on its savings account, guys. So, you know... Obviously, I'm not doing that. So when you look at 10%, and I know there's guys out there doing a lot better than that, but we've got to also go and look at the um, my st statistics down here. Drawdown, maximum for the year, 5%. Weekly, 3%. Daily, 1.8%. I would have been swearing that day. I would have been swearing that week. And obviously, they combined to, to create that. But nonetheless... Average risk score, three, okay, maximum four. And earlier in the year, um, twos and threes, guys. So we're trading very conservatively. The reason we're doing that is because it's, you know, we're training, we're learning, and there's no point in me being gone all in the year, and then it all goes pear-shaped, and then you guys go, well, that didn't help as much. We all lost our money. So I'm trading in such a way that, Yes, you're not going to make 50% if you were to follow me uh, or if you were to copy me or if you were to to uh, train with me. <clears throat> but I'll certainly build you a platform upon which you can stay in the game long enough to get enough experience and, and then to get a little bit lucky every now and again. You need to be in something the day that it goes, guys. That's where the big money comes in. When you, get, when you catch one of those big moves, and then, you know, decide to stay in it. That's when you start to boost your money. You don't boost your money 
by bumping up your leverage, guys. All you do is, is, is speed up the point at which you're going to blow your account because you're not going to get lucky all the time, guys. So you need to trade conservatively and then get lucky whenever things go well and accumulate your positions, guys. Okay, um, so that's the, the statistics. At the moment, the portfolio... Um, Getting a little bit battered and th a few things. Just a quick run through it. There's um, that Aussie yen up 2.5% <laughs> in a couple of hours. I might just take that off because I'm I'm not really convinced by it. Uh, BA, listen, Baidu, guys, I think Baidu will do well. But at the moment, the way things are in China with the new rules they're bringing in, they're putting a bit of pressure on their tech uh, companies. So they're a little bit off at the moment, but with a bit of patience, that should come up okay. Um, Corsair made 40% on it in a day a few weeks ago, um, but got back into it as it dropped. And, and now we're, we're in a bit of a drawdown, but I think Corsair should be a good company. Uh, there's the pound, 2.8% within the last hour, guys. I opened these trades just before... Um, uh, we started the recording. GDX, yet again, uh, gold mining company, minor gold mining companies, um, ETF, down 13%. Got caught in the wrong side of gold, guys, but I think gold will recover. So I'm not overly concerned about that. Uh, Kinross Gold Mine made quite a gold company, sorry. I used to work in Kinross Gold Mine in South Africa years ago. That's why I said that. Um, this, is an, this is a Canadian company. Um well, as opposed to a South African company, they just happen to have the same name. Um, yeah, it's battered me a little bit over the last few weeks, but uh, just waiting for gold to recover, and then we'll do okay out of that. Um, these will get battered today, guys. NIO, NIU. Um, PayPal might even get battered with the bond rates dropping. Rio Tinto, Hedge. That's my silver head. A lot of hedges on here, guys. Sony will probably get battered today. The dollar's slightly up, uh, selling, obviously. Visa, Vertex, probably get battered today, guys. Uh, wheat and precious metals. I think I think we'll see a bit, a bit of recovery in gold. If the, the NASDAQ gets hammered today, you might see a bit of move up in gold, guys. And then Whitbread. Don't know what's going on with Whitbread. I got into Whitbread because the UK is opening up. The pubs are all opening. You'd have thought that uh, Whitbread would have gone long. It'll come right. Not overly concerned about it. Now, just looking at the history is why we're on here. For anyone that's new, what do I normally do, guys? Well, normally I've got lots of tech companies on, but I've got out of them recently, guys, because we've been this year we've been taking 5%, guys, just because valuations are so high that, at some point, we're going to get a correction. So I'm just saying, listen, we've got 5%. Get the money off the table, and then let's see how things progress. And then if we get a little bit confident again, get into something else, get 5%, get it off the table. And that's how we've managed to get our 11% uh, for the year so far, 107 whatever it is today. And you can see here, most of these, 5%, 8%, 8%, 5%. A few where I've chickened out. Bitcoin, I just decided to get out of Bitcoin and get it off the cards because um, it wasn't doing the account any good, guys. Uh, Overstock, 5%, sorry, 6%, 5%, Teledoc, 5%, Teledoc, Square, 5%. Now, the upside of this is that you get your money, you get it off and you, off the table and you put it into the, the account, as it were. The downside is if they continue to go up, then you don't get the rest of the upside to it, guys. But as I said, I'm trading conservatively with this account this year, which is the reason why we're doing that. So far, it's worked out quite nicely for us. And if we go to the bottom um, over here, we're in 49.98% in cash. Now, is that a good strategy or not? Well, we'll find out if the market continues to go up. It won't be a good a, a good thing because obviously I'm not in with with half my money.
But if we get that crash or that certainly a, a good correction, guys, then it means through the rest of the year, if we can get the rest of that money into the market, particularly maybe into growth stocks, then we should really do well for the rest of the year. It's all about making decisions, guys. So we'll have to see how it goes. If it's sitting there, I can't lose it if there's a crash. But if it's sitting there, I can't, I can't make money on it as well. So it's a bit of, you know, a little bit of conservative trading, guys. And, 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 and as I was saying earlier, we'll just finish up with this one. As I was saying earlier, we're on 10.71%. If we hadn't been running with 50% cash, we could easily have doubled that for the year so far, guys. But hindsight's a wonderful thing. If I suddenly went 100% in or 90, 95% in, and then it turned out the next six months were a downtrend for the markets, then I'd look back and go, why on earth did you do that? So we need to be careful. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I'm going to be starting to put these out every day, and then we'll get a, a Patreon account set up for training and anything like that. So anybody that um, decides to subscribe, fire a little bit of coffee money my direction, guys, then we'll give you all of that training. And then also the, the, any trades that I take on a day, I'll put them out there in the Patreon and We'll also do analysis of individual stocks, guys. But the day that I decide to trade those, we'll put those into um, the decision-making process and the trade. I'll put that into the little Patreon account. Okay, guys, uh, that'll do for today. Speak to you all again tomorrow. Bye for now.